depending on what state you live in. The first one we're going to talk about is called a lean theory. So let's do this again. Here you are, here the bank is. The bank is going to give you money. You are going to sign the first document we talked about, which is an IOU. And then you are going to sign the second document, which is the hypothecation or the collateral and the mortgage. <clears throat> and then the bank is going to go out and file a lien as an interest in your property. And if you think back and start putting this stuff together, you are going to see why is the bank have an interest in your property? Remember, it's not an estate because the difference between the estate and the interest is possession. The bank is not going to live in the house, so they have an interest in your property. You have the estate, like the freehold estate, in your property, and the bank is going to go file that lien that we've talked about, and it's going to be the first lien on your property, and we discussed first lien, I borrowed 100000 from Fifth Third, and it gets recorded by a date. This is what we call the lien theory. Most states work under the lien theory. Indiana works under a lien theory. Florida works under the lien theory. There is a second version of this. Now, I always used to equate this when I first started teaching to VHS and beta. Remember, if you guys remember, there used to be two types of videotapes. One was a VHS system. One was a beta system. And the beta never really took off. Now, for the newer, younger, hipper crowd, I always say one is the iOS system. The other is the Android system. Both of these work. They're just different methods on how they work. The second method is called a title theory method. And it works like this. Here you are. Here the bank is. The bank gives you money. You sign the IOU. But then you deed the property into some third party holder as a trust. Remember the third way to own property? We had severalty. We had co-ownership. And what was the third method? A trust. So here you would use that deed of trust to deed the property into a third party company who is designed to do nothing but hold trusts. And then that trust would give you that beneficial interest, meaning you get to live in the property but who's the actual owner of the property? The trust is. Very important you understand because this is going to be the foundation on which we set a lot of other conversations about these loans. Does the lender or does the state work as a title theory state or a lien theory state? This difference actually is one of the reasons why some agents, and probably you may be thinking of this, is my license good in another state? Well, it may be. This is one of the differentiating factors. If the other state is a lien theory, they may accept our, our class, whereas if the state is a title theory, they may go, we don't recognize your license because we work under the Android system you did your education in the lean system or the iOS, two different systems. You have to take class again. So this is just one of the small factors that might determine whether your license can be moved 
in reciprocity, which we may touch on a little bit. If you've got questions about that, email me, Raymond at Real University. We're not going to get real in depth about which states can go back and forth. Some will accept your license, some will not. For example, uh, I'm sitting in Indiana. Now I have a broker's license in about five states, but I looked at one in Nevada and Nevada said, we don't recognize your license. You have to go through class and take the test because what you do in Indiana, we don't really care about. So these are the two theories, lien theory, title theory. Now it's important to understand in the lien theory, we use this word called a mortgage. In the title theory, they use the word deed of trust. Do not interchange these. You cannot use one in place of the other because this word means this method. You cannot say, I scored a touchdown and be talking about baseball. That word touchdown does not go in to the theory of baseball. If you said, I have a mortgage, you will know right away that's a lien theory state because that word is only used in that method. If someone says, I have a deed of trust, that's title theory. I cannot hit a hole in one in hockey. Words don't go together. Same thing here. Deed of trust always means title theory. Now, one other thing you may hear it called occasionally, two-party system, three-party. Because there are three people here, there's only two here. Once again, three-party system means title theory, two-party system means lien theory. So depending on what state, and the, you don't get to make this decision. The seller doesn't. This is what is made by somehow long ago in some folklore. The states have determined either they are a lien theory or the title theory. Okay. So right here, this explains what's the saying. Title theory transfers legal title to some trust. They own the property. In the lien theory, you are the owner of the property. You just owe a lien or you owe somebody some money. These are the two things. That deed of trust creates that three-party system and conveys what they call naked title, which we touched on. The person living in the property, the person with the beneficial interest, this person right here, has naked title meaning they possess the property, but the legal title is owned by this third party person. This is the deed of trust method or the title theory method, okay? Now, what does not matter which one you use, there are some duties that the borrower of the money must adhere to. Whether you're in title theory or lien theory doesn't matter. You must make the payments according to the IOU. If it said monthly payments, then you make the monthly payments. You make them at that certain amount, that $555 and whatever. You got to pay the taxes to make sure that the property has its taxes maintained. You must also properly maintain the property because the lender wants to make sure that that property doesn't lose value because it no longer would be sufficient collateral for the loan. Did you guys know this? Do you know that if you make a, an adjustment to your property, you're supposed to get your lender's permission. You want to go out and add a bedroom to your house. You got to call your, uh, lender and go, hey, can I add a bedroom? Because what they don't want is for you to go, oh, I'm going to add a bedroom. So you chop the back half of the house off and then you step back and go, I don't think I can do this. And now you've got a big hole in the back of your house. Is that house worth what it was before you put a hole in it? The answer is no. And that lender now may be upside down 
because the value of that $250,000 house is now $2. And now their loan is in jeopardy. So technically you have to maintain the property adequate so that the value stays the same and you have to maintain adequate insurance against any force of nature like a hailstorm or a tornado so that if that house gets destroyed not by you but by you know an act of nature then they are protected so that they their loan money will come back all of these things and right there's what i was talking about you are supposed to get authorization if you make a major alteration. Has anybody done that? <laughs> I haven't. I, I fooled you, didn't I? I haven't done that. We just do that all the time. Oh, I'm going to add a driveway, or I'm going to uh, draw a circular driveway in the front of my yard, or I'm going to add a deck, or I'm going to finish my basement, I'm going to put a new bedroom in the attic. All those things. You are actually supposed to get their authorization. Nobody ever does. All right? Now, inside of this mortgage or inside of this deed of trust, there are these provisions for default. Now, let me make sure you understand that default does not mean late. Those are two different terms. If my mortgage payment is due on the 5th and I pay it on the 6th, that is late and I may end up paying a penalty for being late. Default is always defined in the paperwork. <laughs> Sometimes it's the simple things that please me. Default is defined, and typically default might be two or three months of continuous unpayment. So you haven't made a payment in three months on your property you lost your job whatever and you went three months and didn't make a house payment that lender is going to put you in default status and the default status is going to include this one major clause right here it is called the acceleration clause they are going to accelerate those 360 months of payments to be due today. Now, do not get confused and think that they are going to accelerate all 360 payments of $555. That's not what we're talking about. They are going to accelerate the due date on the outstanding principle due today. So I borrowed a hundred thousand dollars. Let's see if we can go back and pull that back up. Did I delete that? Yeah, I guess I certainly did. But if you remember on that note, it said that I was going to pay $550, and I can't remember, for 360 months, and I borrowed $100,000, and I have missed three payments, and they put me in default, and they exercise the acceleration clause. They are not going to call this due. What they are going to call due is the outstanding principle. Let's say I still owe $97,000 after I made a couple payments. This is what they are calling due. That is the acceleration clause. So you're not going to have to come up with that 200 grand. You've got to come up with the outstanding balance of the loan. And in this case, you borrowed 100 uh, five or six months later, you still owe 97 and you've missed payments. They put you in default. They have exercised the acceleration clause and they call you and they go, dude, you need to bring us our money back of 97. That's how much you owe. We want that today. And if not today, we want it yesterday. All right. So here's the question. How does 
someone give the bank $97,000 today. Now, I wish we were live because I know there's going to be some thoughts that run through your head. And the first, the most common one I hear is just give the bank the house back. No, that is called foreclosure. That's probably the last thing I want to do. The second thing, somebody raises their hand, goes, oh, oh, refinance it. Yes, that's an option. However, here's the problem. You have proven that you haven't made the payment in three months. That is why you're in default. And remember we talked about the credit score? Your credit score now has probably taken a ding because history payments are the number one item and you haven't made a payment. So it's going to show up on your mortgage or on your credit as not making payments. And now you probably don't have the credit score to refinance. So while that could be an option, it's usually not the most reasonable option or the most obtainable option. So what's the third option you can do?